Macklemore did a song called White Privilege too. Mm -hmm. Did you hear it? Mm -hmm. What'd you think? I liked it. You liked it? Mm -hmm. Why did you like it? Because Macklemore, like he's a different type of dude, you know, and he, I think he gets misunderstood. Um, uh, <laughs> there is a such thing as white privilege, you know, like we see it every day as a black person, white people who have eyes to see can see it as well. And for him to speak on it, you know, I mean, call it what it is, you know what I'm saying? And I, I only heard it once, maybe I missed something, but I, I, I dig Macklemore, at, I don't, you know, I don't buy his shit, but if I hear it, I don't turn it off, you know, and I watch the videos and I pay attention. I haven't seen a video of it, maybe I'm missing something. Uh, I don't think there's a video for White Privilege, okay, well, it's just the audio. Good, I haven't seen one. You know, and he, he mentioned Iggy Azalea, Miley Cyrus, and Elvis, as well as himself as being uh, recipients of, of white privilege. Well, you know, Miley could have lived her whole entire life without, you know, getting any kind of African-American fan base or hanging around with Wiz Khalifa and smoking weed and stuff like this. She could have lived a very comfortable life without doing any of that. I've met her, she was loads of fun and hanging around Snoop and all that, but you know, what is that all about? Like, like, why? And Elvis obviously covered songs that were made by black artists and made more money than the black artists did, so that's been hap happening throughout history, you know. Um, uh, who's uh, uh, Iggy Azalea, you know, comes out of wherever she came, Australia, yeah, Australia, and decides to say, do that, do that, and who that, who that, and all that, get her a big black ass and get her a big black man. So I don't see black women or black artists flocking to, you know, unless you want to count Darius Rucker, flocking to embrace the white, uh, um, you know, characteristics and stuff like that. It's obvious that black people got more swag, even Asians and Chinese are, you know, trying to get their hip hop on and they've been doing that for a long, long time. So, I mean, you know, white privilege gives you the, the chance to be as black and fly as you want to till some shit goes down and then you can fade out of that and pull your white card back out. So, I believe what he's saying is relevant. And, and Macklemore did attend some of the, the rallies, I think Ferguson, he attended the Ferguson rally. Um, and he talked about how, I mean in the song, he talked about how the whole Black Lives Matter thing, whether he should be involved, whether he should not be involved, you know, how he's sort of torn between being involved in something like that where the officers essentially all look like him except have badges and so forth. Um, do you feel that more white people should address these types of topics? It goes back to the Oscar thing, right? I mean, I think if you're not a scared white person, you know, just like black people, always, we always laugh about how scary white people are, scary ass white folks. Right. Because they don't want to rock the boat, we don't want to cause any tension, I'm nervous and all this stuff, you know, black people make white people nervous. If that was not the case, then entertainers would not have big black bodyguards, they'd have big white ones. But a lot of times they don't, they get big black bodyguards. Okay. A scary big black man. This is you interesting, know? so you, you, feel, you feel that most of the bodyguards are black? I don't feel like most of them are, but I feel like a lot of them are. But then, you know, Samoans are bigger than black men are. This, this is true, yeah. Go and get some Samoans, yeah. get them some work. Easy E used to have some, the, the two Samoan bodyguards. Back yeah, there. and Prince used to have Chick, who was a huge white guy, looked like a wrestler, but he died. But I, I'm just saying that I think conscious white people who are sincere about how they feel and about the culture, if they want to speak up, they should speak up. 
you know? Don't let it just be our job because I find if I see injustice to a Latino on the street, I'm gonna speak up about that. If I see somebody bullying, I've always been a, a, a anti-bully advocate, even from kindergarten. If I see somebody messing with a mentally challenged person, I'm gonna jump in. If I see somebody fucking with, you know, a homeless person, not that I would fuck with the homeless person, but if I see somebody fucking with them, I'm not gonna just stand there and let that happen. You know, that's why I hope that John Quinones never puts me on one of them what would you do situations because it ain't going to end up the way they think these nice little scenarios end up because I go ham about injustice. And so I think that if, if, you know, it's just like white women that date black guys. If you date the black guy because he's a black guy, you can't just love that black guy. You got to love the culture or else you're just fucking perpetrating and you're in a fucking way. You know, and that's when we talk shit. But if you're a white chick and you're from the South and you know how to, you know, cook grits and you, your people are just as Southern as my people was, and you know, then then we tend to embrace that a little a little bit more. So if you if you if you feel a certain way and your heart tells you to get involved, get involved. If you feel a certain way and your heart tells you don't to get involved and you don't get involved, then I don't have I don't have nothing for you because you just you know. It's it's an interesting point. I mean, actually, how you said that when, when someone gets a bodyguard, they get a black bodyguard. And I actually think about my main bodyguard in in L.A. is a big, you know. Well, I have two. Six foot five black guy. Yeah, right? because they fucking scare the shit out of everybody, whether they can fight or not. Which, when it comes down to it, a big fucking black man is not going to be able to chase you around a motherfucking block. He might smash you up against the wall if he can reach you, but he ain't going to be able to chase you. I have two bodyguards. One is Belizean and Samoan, he's black, technically, and one is Persian. Now who do you think they're scared of more, the big black guy or the Persian? The big black one, he's military, the Persian one used to work for CIA. So really, who's scarier? Really, it's right. him. The CIA guy. Run a check on your ass. Well, one of the things that, that we talked about, for example, with, uh, with Lord Jamar, you know, who's a, a mainstay on Vlad TV, was he feels that when you see these images like Kanye in a skirt or a young thug in a dress, it's to make black men it more, yeah, more ec tolerable for white society. Did you agree with that? I have no excitement for black men in a dress. I don't. Um, it's been that old mammy slapstick shit since blackface. You know, I doubt that you're going to catch, unless he was playing a Scottish leader, I doubt that you're going to catch Idris in one. Hmm. I doubt that you're going to catch Denzel in one. Well, uh... I'm talking about a dress. Wesley Snipes has been in a dress. I didn't say Wesley. I know, I saw two Wang Fu. <laughs> You know, uh, I'm from, I was born in Arkansas. I have, you know, gay men in my family. Nobody in my family, male, with a dick slinging is gonna be wearing a dress. It's not gonna happen. No. Not even the gay ones. Well, maybe my nephew. But the other one, not the other one. You know who I'm talking about. But, um, I, I I just don't, you know, okay, the Medeas and the Big Mama's Houses, they're funny, but then it gets to be too far. Like, that's why Chappelle is my hero. When they tried to put him in a dress, he was like, fuck no. Wait, they tried to put Dave Chappelle in a dress? You don't know the story? I do not. Okay, and, so. And I actually know Dave Chappelle. We, we talk sometimes. This is one of the things that made him leave the show when he felt they were laughing at him and not with him. Okay, I heard that. They wrote a sketch and they said, so listen, Dave, you know, we got this sketch and it's gonna go like this and there and you're gonna put on this dress and you're gonna go, and Dave's like, I'm, I'm not putting on no dress. And said, no, no, Dave, it's good, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be fantastic, it's gonna be so funny. Listen, you put on this dress and you come in and you say, I'm not wearing a motherfucking dress. I said, no, listen, Dave, this is, listen, just look at it. Look at it in the context we were. Dave was like, I'm not wearing a fucking dress. Fuck you, fuck everybody in here, went to his dressing room. They sent the producers in. They sent the executives in. They sent all the suits in to talk to Dave. He says, there's a way we can do this scene without me motherfucking wearing a dress. 
Now, fucking, you pay writers, rewrite the shit, figure it out. I'm not wearing a fucking dress. They rewrote it. Okay. So, the moral of the story is, if you don't want to put on a dress, you don't have to. So all these motherfuckers that want to wear dresses and shit, somewhere in the back of their mind, they wanted to wear that shit. Now, you know, uh, uh, not Tyrese, the other, the model guy. Um, Tyson Beckford? Yeah, Tyson wears maybe a skirt for high fashion runway shit. He could have got out of that too, probably. But, you know, it's high fashion European runway shit. Will and Jada Smith's children, I don't know them. I'm not trying to fuck up my career, but they haven't hired me yet. I doubt that I see it coming down the pike. The girl seems to want to be a boy, and the boy wants to be a fucking girl. Jaden Smith is actually the face of Louis Vuitton women's wear. Women's wear. wear. It's not going to happen in my family. I don't give a fuck how much money you want to offer my son. And you're selling your child out to let him walk up. You, you know, even if he rocked like a kilt or something, you're not going to make my son the face of motherfucking women's wear. Well, Jaden was wearing dresses before Louis Vuitton showed up. There you up. go. And there you go. Because he wanted to. Yeah. Right. I, have, I know Jaden a little bit. You know, we run into each other in Calabasas. That's cute. He uh, can date all the white girls. He was wearing a dress last time. Scar- last time I seen him. Too. Yeah, he was wearing a dress last time I seen him. Okay. Does, uh, he, wear, does he come down to Crenshaw with one on? I don't think he goes to Crenshaw, period. I don't think. I, oh, he might slip down there, but he ain't got no goddamn skirt on when he comes down there. I bet you that. <laughs> I think he just stays in Calabasas, really. I don't know. I heard Jada shopped South of Wilshire. They got a new show called South of Wilshire now. They said she shopped the Zambezi where I got this from. Okay. They might come down there, but they'll be on the sly. Baseball cap, sunglasses, tinted windows. What's your take on Tyler Perry? In what respect? He wears dresses. A lot. Yeah. (laughs) He continues to... There's a new Medea movie coming out, I heard. Yeah, but he's not wearing them to the club, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like Jaden wears this shit like on the street. Right. Tyler's not wearing any dresses on the street. Now, do I think that he could probably be over with the Medea shit? I think he probably feels like he could be over with the Medea shit. Well, why does he keep doing it then if he feels he could be over it? Because More money? money is the root of all everything. I mean, people still check for Medea? Like, it's still a profitable venture? Absolutely. What, what are the church people going to go see at the movie theater? Oh, that's what it is? It's a, it's a church thing? It's a church thing. Right, because before he started doing movies, he was doing, he, plays. He was doing plays, doing the it's same the thing. Church, the church people got to have something to watch. They can't watch a damn thing on TV these days. I guess I, since I'm, you know, kind of removed from the church community, I, okay, I, I see where you're going with this. And there's millions and millions. The whole Bible Belt. There's millions and millions of church people out there, and non-church people, young, youngsters. Like my daughter's 20 now, but when she was 13, 14, 15, 16, she carried my dear DVD around in her little backpack. You okay. know, they love it. It's entertaining and it's fun. I'll watch it in the house. <laughs> well, there, there was an interview with, with Young Thug recently on Sway, and they talked about the whole dresses and everything else like that. And what Young Thug kept saying was, he's on his Prince shit. And I had to take a step back and say, I mean, Prince actually almost took it farther than Young Thug, because Prince, remember, had the, the- Prince is androgynous. Prince wore makeup and right. Prince had pants had, with, with the ass coming yeah, out. Yeah, and, and V-neck, low cut, you know, whatever. He was on the board. We are, if, if Prince didn't have such a rep with the chicks, we would have called him queen a long time ago and did for a minute. But he kept getting these badass bitches, you know. Right, because no one really calls Prince gay. No, not so much out loud, but there were rumblings back in the day. But, you know, he like, Prince is the type of dude to wear ass out, chaps, a skirt, and fuck your bitch. Right. So. And yeah, and Prince has some of the baddest bitches, period. What are you gonna do? Period. But yeah. Michael that didn't have the bitches. Yeah, Michael didn't have the bitches. <laughs> Michael you know, he might have slammed a couple in on the low low, but. Yeah, Prin- Prince was the one, Prince was the one with all the bitches. And I think that's still. what. Still. Still? Still. Still Prince. Yeah, I mean, even his band, Third Eye Girl, those bitches is bad. You know, they play instruments oh, really? and they look good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he did the Super Bowl not too long ago. He's still, I mean, he's still presenting at award shows. I'd hit it. That Prince won for Prince. Okay. Well, I mean, Young Thug's fiance, who we actually interviewed, and Young Thug actually jumped in the interview, was pretty attractive. 
So, so Young Thug don't get that same Prince pass? Who's get, who gives? Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> ask me about Earth, Wind, and Fire. Don't ask me about the Young Thug. I don't know who the fuck this motherfucker is. Him kind of crying and me crying. So, you know what I mean? It just, it was no more the words. A couple of days later, they tell me he died. How did you feel when they? Um, they said that. I mean, did you know that he was gonna die with it? No. Nah, the tubes? No. 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 Uh. Uh. Give me a second. Uh. To go through all you went through, and your end result is being killed in a drive-by affiliation is like is like way beyond the aspect of 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 because you could have been here and left a, a way better mark.